So everybody's favorite enterprise Linux distribution has a Raspberry Pi edition now. SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for Raspberry Pi. It says this is a specially packaged version of SUSE Linux Enterprise for ARM tailored for Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Well, I have one of those. And actually for a while, my Raspberry Pi was running the EGIO web server. Now in this video, we won't be using SUSE Enterprise Linux. Instead, we'll be using OpenSUSE specifically Leap 42.2, the Just Enough OS image. It's pretty awesome that OpenSUSE offers a bunch of different images here. The JEOS image probably works best as a server, and then you've got the other ones that actually offer desktop environments, which is pretty nice. So since we're doing this on a Raspberry Pi, we got a format and SD card. I'll be using the same 16 gig card that I installed Ubuntu Snappy on in a previous video. First we'll unmount everything, and then we'll create a new partition table. Now you probably could use GPT, but I'm going to use MS-DOS here just because it's the most reliable. Now after the partition table's been created, you got to format the space, and you probably could use one of the EXT file systems, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with FAT32 because I know that that works. And after the space has been formatted, that's all we'll need to do with Gparted. So let's close it out and fire up a terminal. Now I'm going to use a trick that I learned from my friend Fratum. He did a few videos installing Gentoo, and he used the time command to kind of show us how long it took to compile things. I'm going to use the time command in this video, and in this case we're going to see how long it takes to move the OpenSUSE image onto the SD card, so let's do it. So it looks like that process took a little under three and a half minutes, which is actually pretty decent, I think. So now that we have OpenSUSE on our SD card, let's go ahead and fire up the Raspberry Pi. So once we make it past the Raspberry Pi's boot screen, we'll be greeted with the very familiar OpenSUSE bootloader. Or at least the bootloader screen. It's actually pretty cool that it has this, because I know that Ubuntu Snappy Core does not. It boots you straight into the operating system. Now I'm not exactly sure what happens after you select an option from the bootloader screen, but it goes to black and it stays out for so long that my monitor actually turned off the first time I thought the Raspberry Pi crashed on me. The second time I just spammed the shift key and it actually recovered and I was at the login screen so I'm not sure if it was installing something in the background or what. Speaking of the login screen, we'll go ahead and log in with the default username of root and the password is Linux. Pretty much the rest of the video from here on out is going to be the terminal so once we've logged in we'll go ahead and do a zipper update but let's go ahead and see how long it takes to do the update with the time command. So that update took a little over a minute, which is actually really good when you consider that Zipper had to build the repository cache from scratch. And while we're here, let's go ahead and create a user, and I actually did part of this off camera because I had to look some of this up. The JEOS image is just that. It is just enough to get your OS up and going, and everything else is left up to you. So now that the user stuff is out of the way, we're going to set up our Pi to run my website, EGIO. Now initially I installed Nginx for a web server, but later I realized that I don't actually need Nginx to test the website, I can serve it directly through Ember. But the Nginx install only took about 20 seconds. The website code lives in Git, so we need to pull that down. That download and install took a little bit longer at a minute and 13 seconds. So we'll obviously need a place to serve up the code, so we'll need to switch over to our user account and create some subdirectories. We'll go ahead and clone the website repository into the main user folder. And I forgot to use the time command here, but that only took about 30 seconds. Now we need to install Node.js and NPM. I didn't bother timing either of these because the download and install times are pretty consistent. Once Node.js and NPM are installed, we'll need to install a couple global node modules. The first of which is Bower, which is a sort of package manager and it's required by Ember. The second global module is the Ember CLI itself. Now I forgot to time the installation of Bower, but Bower isn't that large. The Ember CLI is massive, and I did time that one. And the installation of the Ember CLI took almost 7 minutes. So now that we have Bower and Ember installed, we need to actually restore the NPM and Bower modules for the website. Now a lot of these modules are written in native code, which means NPM actually has to compile them. Needless to say, our poor little ARM processor is not optimized for compiling code, so this part is going to take a long time. So restoring all those packages took a pretty good amount of time at 21 minutes. Now I also went back and installed Make and GCC and did another restore just to make sure there weren't any errors because something was missing and everything was fine. So the last thing we'll do here before going back to the main workstation is do an Ember build to build the website and make sure there aren't any errors with Ember or anything. So now that the Ember build is done, we'll go back to the main workstation and SSH into the Pi and set up the website. So back at my workstation, I'll need to SSH into the Raspberry Pi. 
And I enabled password authentication off camera because I didn't want to have to figure out how to get my key onto the Pi. Now if we use top to look at the system resources, you can see that there's not a whole lot happening on this thing. All right, so let's CD into the website directory and we'll run Ember serve. That'll start the Node.js web server. And it says that it's serving on port 4200, so let's try it. And hey, there it is. That was a cold load too. There wasn't any cache for it to pull from. So let's pop open the developer tools and take a look at the response times. Now there's nothing on the website that's really that big, but all this is being served up on a Raspberry Pi, so that's pretty freaking cool. Now for whatever reason, this OpenSUSE Leap 42.2 on a Raspberry Pi feels significantly quicker than the Ubuntu server I had on it. I am really pleased and impressed with the work that the OpenSUSE team has done with this. Now I know a lot of it has come from SUSE Enterprise, but it's been very well adapted for the OpenSUSE project and I really appreciate everything those guys are doing. So if you're interested in putting OpenSUSE on your Raspberry Pi, you can see from this video how easy it was. If you like this video and other videos on my channel, you can leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I appreciate your support and thanks for watching.